hello there. Who's this fine-looking gentleman? He is uh, one each Gregor Mendel, uh, credited as being the father or the founder of the uh, science of genetics. We're going to be studying genetics for quite a while in this course now. And uh, so, uh, Mr. Mendel uh, lived where? Well, it's a slightly confusing if you look in your textbook. Right below this picture, he says he was a what kind of monk? An Austrian monk. That would, uh, that would uh, uh, cause you to believe he's from Austria. And uh, however, up in the text, he says uh, his monastery was in the what republic? The Czech Republic. Well, uh, those are two different countries now, Austria and the Czech Republic. Uh, but, as far as I can figure out, uh, the Czech Republic back in the time Mendel was born was part of the Austrian Empire. Part of the Austrian Empire. So, that's why I guess he's called an Austrian monk. I don't know too much about that part of the world, never been there. <clears throat> uh, all I uh, know about Austria is that uh, I think that's where they climb every mountain, ford every stream, follow every rainbow, till they found their dream. And some of you are going, what? What is that about? If you uh, know what I'm talking about, you've watched a very famous movie called what? The Sound of Music. If you haven't watched The Sound of Music, I highly recommend it. Uh, Julie Andrews, Christopher Plummer, one of the top movies of all times. Uh, but anyway, that's neither here nor there. Uh, when did Mendel live? Well, he lived uh, quite some time ago. You don't have to know the dates of his, his, uh, his uh, you know, birth and death and so forth. Uh, I would like you to possibly know the years he was doing his research. And so, what does the book say there? It says 1856 to 1863. Now, that seems a long time ago, even to me, and I'm pretty old. But to put it in historical context, uh, what major terrible event was going on in the United States during uh, part of that period, at least? The Civil War, the American Civil War, the war between the states, whatever you want to call it. So, <clears throat> uh, but Mendel's far, far away over in uh, what is now called uh, Eastern Europe and uh, doing his research. And what was he doing his research on? He was doing his research on a plant called the garden bee. Now Mendel lived in a, he was a monk, it's, you know, it says there in the book, he's a monk. Monks lived in monasteries and worked in monasteries. All monasteries had to be self-supporting. And so uh, they did various things to raise money. Some of them had hospitals, some of them had schools. Uh, some of them uh, raised grapes and made wine and sold it. Uh, and so and then they also had other things just to eat and stay alive. In other words, there was a monastery garden. And uh, Mendel's monastery obviously had a garden <coughs> because all his experiments were on what's called the garden, commonly called the garden pea. Here's a picture of it. Uh, and so uh, what do we have here? Uh, we have a long, th uh, thin little uh, structure here, uh, or item. It's got little bumps inside. What are the little bumps? They are seeds. And uh, technically speaking, the pod, we talked about this many lessons ago, the pod, technically speaking, is a what? It's a fruit. You say, wait a minute, is it a fruit? Does it come from a flower? Uh, it surely does. And so we're going to learn a lot about um, uh, Mendel's experiments with pea plants and what he learned about genetics. And But uh, let's look at these pictures on other pages. Here we have uh, here we have uh, a, uh, <clears throat> a flower. It's not a very big flower; it's kind of a tiny little flower, and uh, it's got uh, the various flower parts inside. Uh, we'll learn uh, <clears throat> we'll learn about these parts in some detail toward the end of the course. But uh, uh, if that if all goes well for that flower, uh, eventually there will be a bean pod with seeds inside. A fruit. The bean pod's a fruit. Um, technically speaking, with uh, seeds inside. Now what did Mendel do? <clears throat> he did a lot of experiments involving uh, these garden peas. So what do we see here? We see uh, we see uh, him clipping something off. I mean, represent a little drawing. And what is he clip What's being clipped off here? The male parts of the flower. Flowers, as I'm sure you know, have male and female parts. Uh, most of them do anyway. 
And so this shows the male parts being clipped off. The female part remains. And then this shows going to another flower that still has its male parts and using a little brush to get pollen from the male parts. Must be something male about pollen. Uh, we'll learn that about that much later as well. But uh, for right now, pollen is male. And he takes that back, that pollen, back to the first flower up here, puts it on the top of the female part, lets nature take its course, and, it's, it, uh, and eventually uh, you'll have uh, the uh, <coughs> bean pod with seeds inside. And so he did this with many, 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 many plants. And I'm sure Mendel's fellow monasterians, you know, they, they thought Mendel, you know, they thought, at least thought he was probably eccentric. And uh, because he had all these flowers, probably uh, uh, bean plants and pots, labels hanging on them, so he know which one he crossed with which one, and so forth. Well, we'll find out what he discovered later. Uh, but what was he looking at? He was looking at seven characteristics of his pea plants. And uh, I call them seven either-or characteristics, because seed shape, for example, uh, the, the beans, the peas, were either smooth or wrinkled. Smooth or wrinkled. The seed color was either yellow or green. Not greenish yellow or yellowish green, but green or yellow. Every other of these, of these seven characters was either this or that, this or that, this or that. So again, I call them, my, call them his seven either or characteristics. And these are the characteristics he studied uh, as he did his experiments on these uh, pea plants. And so, uh, um, one last picture in this uh, introductory video. Uh, we see a pea pod uh, popped open. And we see, oh, I don't know how many pea pods. We got uh, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. We got, uh, if I counted those, we got 12 peas inside. And it says some of these peas have a smooth texture while others are wrinkled. And some look a little more green and some a little more yellow, except they're faded, so they don't look real green or real yellow. But uh, the question is, how can you have its different shapes and colors of uh, peas in the same pod? It's very simple. Every pea in a pod is like a different child in a family. Say what? Yeah, every pea in the pod, in a pod, bean pod, is like a different child in a family. And what makes different children in a family? Uh, most of the time, it's a different fertilization event. Every pea in the pod was formed by a different egg cell meeting a different sperm cell. And so, uh, uh, this represents, this picture represents a family of a dozen kids. And so, uh, uh, this satisfied a criterion for Mendel's experiments to have a large sample size uh, as he did his experiments. Alright, that concludes our introductory video.